chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Takano. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I supported the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act when it came to the House last year, and I'm glad it was indeed a bipartisan bill. It was passed in response to the horrific, the horrific uh, shootings that occurred in Uvalde, Texas, and in Buffalo, New York. However, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act was negotiated uh, in a bipartisan manner in the Senate, and then it came over to uh, the House where we voted on it with no changes and sent it to the President for his signature. In attempting to make clear that Title IV funds provided under uh, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act through the ESEA could not be used to arm teachers or school staff, Senate negotiators used language stating that no funds could be used to provide uh, to any person a dangerous weapon or training in the use of a dangerous weapon. Now, the term dangerous weapon is broadly defined. So in using this language, Senate negotiators inadvertently, I believe, precluded the use of funds by students for certain activities in school and extracurricular programs that were previously permitted prior to the Bipartisan uh, Safer Communities Act. Um, the gentleman from Wisconsin has uh, made the claim uh, that it is the Department um, of Education uh, that is misinterpreting the law. They, in fact, are following the law to the very letter. Uh, if we want to place uh, some scrutiny, it should be on the Senate, which I believe drafted uh, this language uh, imprecisely and has resulted in the need for this technical fix. H.R. 5110 is an attempt to fix that language to permit the use of such items for, school, for students in school and extracurricular activities. And I'm glad that we were able to work in a bipartisan manner once again to agree on the language that we are voting on today. As this issue has come to light, many people have targeted the Department of Education as the problem, stating that the department has misinterpreted congressional intent in applying the law. That is absolutely incorrect. The department has been following the law as written and passed by Congress and signed by the president. Of course, we all remember that the president takes an oath to faithfully execute the laws of our country. Today's legislation makes clear that we are not trying to preclude the use of items by students in the pursuit of educational and extracurricular activities. And the list in the example list in the legislative text is not exhaustive. That said, the language would preclude ESEA funding from being used to arm teachers or school staff or train teachers or school staff and the use of dangerous weapons remains intact. With that, I support H.R. 5110, the Protecting Hunting Heritage and Education Act, and urge my colleagues to do the same, and I reserve the balance of my time.